So, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Anton and One Podcast. If you guys can see, I'm testing this out. I just moved this lazy boy here to my room because short story before I start the before I formally start the episode. I have an I have a nice office chair in my in my in my room. And I feel like office chairs are for or for work. But if you want to relax, you have to have like a comfy chair. But then I just have my bed there. And I don't want to. There has to be an in between of like active working and like rest. Agaga. Like the bed is really reserved for the resting. So this one, I feel like it's the more the comfortable one. And the reason why also I I I want to use this for the podcast is because um, I do try to have um, a very comfortable vibe of conversation, and I think it's perfect because um, although this is a recap episode. Uh, I got one of my favorite people to help me out and sort through my thoughts. Uh, she is someone who is the probably one of the reasons why I started hosting back in college. She was my Orsem host hunt head. She is the president of Epimetrics, a public health research firm. She is also an assistant prof or a prof in Ateneo. Um, please welcome to the show, Miss Erica Medina. Yeah. Did I get that I... right? <laughs> yes. Um, I, well, I'm a part-time. Something? I'm a part-time professor, so part-time professor. There are technicalities there. Yeah. <laughs> Did I miss anything? This is my ah oh, man. This is mm-hmm. there. Are, there are people who say that oh, I'm not good with names. I think they're lazy. But me, man, I'm not good with um people's job titles and where they work. <laughs> I'm I'm really trying to work on it. I'm not sure how like if there's a secret code, but I know that you have a lot of things professionally. Yeah. Is there anything I missed? No, no, that's it. So I am the president of Epimetrics and we're also starting Project Fort and I'm a professor. But I'm also studying. So <laughs> but you don't have to mention that. <laughs> oh, but you're you're stud- okay, yeah, yeah. You, 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 no, I do. I'm gonna yeah. ask something about that whole you're you're graduated now and then you're studying pa. Because for me, when I graduated, I was like, that's it. I'm done with classrooms. I don't wanna <laughs> open another book unless it's a book that I want to read. But with that, even if so, so just for those who don't know who you are, who who mm-hmm. who Eka, who or Erica Modine is, <laughs> just your resume. It sounds very mm-hmm. annoying. It sounds very formal, diba? Health, diba? You're yeah. 26 years old. She's 26. Um, 26 years old, and then you're founding this now. You're president, ginyan. But they don't know that in college you were like. Hajma strong, diba? You were <laughs> going to parties. You were really. Um, like you, I would say you had a complete college mm-hmm. life with the with the social um stuff. Did you? Yeah. Are you shocked? Like, is this where you were expecting and where you were where you wanted yourself to be in at this age of twenty six when you were still a student? Yeah. Well, I would think that because I had so much fun in my college life, or even after <laughs> for a <Yeah>. bit, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really at the point that you know. I have to be serious. Um, I I think that because I just had too much fun, probably, I would say after college. Because college, the first two years, three years, I was still focused on my studies. And then, you know, when uh-huh. I decided, okay, I don't want to go to medicine anymore. I want to go into public health. Um, I started living a little. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, I, I started going out. And I guess I had friends who would always... You know, party or maybe just the org itself <laughs> yeah, that yeah. I was with. I had my That's fun. What... That's why I'm very serious. Yeah. Well, but you I'm still not have your so fun. Eh? Exactly. I think you know it's a balance. So if I'm working twelve hours for six days, I could afford to you know go out for a day or maybe just six hours with my friends. So it's really a balance. That's why, but. Right now, I just because of time management and because I'm just at home, I could balance my meetings. Uh-huh. I I could really have fun at my own time now. Yeah. And you know, that's that's with growing up. Parang you just know your limit. So before when you're young, you don't know you know how to cure a hangover or uh-huh. <laughs> you don't know until you don't know how to say no when you were young. So you would just keep saying yes to all the ganaps. But now, yeah. you know, if I have a presentation the next day, I'm not going to go out. But if I don't have anything this week, then <laughs> we can go out and have go fun, back. go to the yeah. beach. Yeah. 
that's the work life balance that 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 is work life balance and that, that's something i um it, j- j- for 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 those again who don't know Eka, i i really go to her for so much for advice on like a lot of things life love life career um and health okay so that's my transition to health so <laughs> you're, you're not you, you studied you your course in college was health side which is yeah. the if you want to be a doctor that's sort of the mm. course um yes. you want to take and and the, the the first guest i had in the medical series Gio Ilgaga that's that's his course he was um um health side when did you know though how did you how did you know that 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 you didn't want to be a doctor now uh, I took the NMAT, which is the test you have to take, uh, like a standardized te- standardized test you have to take to apply to med school. So uh-huh. I took that NMAT, and then right after NMAT, I entered the car. I was just like, <laughs> no, <laughs> this is not this. for me. Shempre, I started fooling myself. I was lying to myself, like, yeah, kaya yan. I, you know, I will wait for the results and then I'll apply. But right when I entered the car, I just said, I can't imagine, you know, five to six more years of my life taking tests like that or okay. taking tests that, you know, I know my end goal is health like public health. My, I know my end goal is policy, public health, research. I knew that already. So I just wanted to go to med school or I wanted to take my pre-med. Because growing up, it's always, I see doc, you know, yeah, like yeah. she's a doctor. Mm-hmm. It's so prestigious. Um, and I just know that with the MD in my name, I could go somewhere or I could have more options than without an MD. Mm-hmm. But I knew I wasn't passionate enough to go through five to six years of taking tests every week like that. I I know it's not a good basis. Like, NMAT is not a good basis on if you you should go to med school or not. But that's when I first knew. And then people were starting to apply to ASMPH, to Mm -hmm. UP, to USD. And I just couldn't get myself to apply. So I told myself, okay, I'm going to take a gap year. So it's always like that. I'm going to try working first. And then if I want to still go to med school, I could always be delayed. Like what yeah. is, you know, going to med school, not with my batch. That's that's a non-issue for me. So because of that, parang sabi ko, okay, I'll just take a gap year. I'll study more. I'll work with my mentor who is currently my boss right now in Epimetrics. And then I'll see where it goes. Um, and then... <laughs> I never went to med school. <laughs> so you were still kind of open to it. After yes. you graduated college, you were still kind of open to it. Yeah. So I was open to it until mga two years in working. So mm-hmm. around 2018, I was still thinking about it. Yeah. But I applied to my master's instead. So yeah, yeah instead of going to med school. No. Um, I studied... <laughs> So I studied a certificate course in the States for technology and innovation because I know that the trend in health would be in tech. I know that the trend in health. health, No. (laughs) I don't know this. I'm a bad friend. Okay, go on. Please go on. (laughs) It it had something to do with design thinking and innovation and technology. So I, I took some courses in health to kind of, parang myself, I could piece it together, you know, like, put two and two mm-hmm. together and just deal with how I'm going to integrate it. But it wasn't it wasn't entirely health. I took that course because I said, okay, if I want to look for a job or if I kind of want to boost my CV, I needed to study more. And because nga, public health or health in general, very traditional, like medicine is such a traditional field. Yeah. Public health is such a traditional field. Um, you really need to study more. Or I felt like I was going to be more confident if I studied more. So it's not a need. It's just me on my own. I yeah. wanted to be more confident talking to people, talking about health, talking about public health. Yeah. So I just wanted to learn more. So yeah, and I took a... <laughs> I took a certificate course right after college and then I worked immediately. And then two years in, I was in the same crossroads. Now, should I go into med school or should I just continue, um, you know, studying um, public health? And then, of course, you know my answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in public health, where you are now, it's still one 
you kind of were confident to make that decision to say no to um, the same way you know how to say no to parties when it's appropriate. <laughs> you said no to med school because you had that. Ano eh. It wasn't mm-hmm. man blindly saying no because I don't that's I figured yeah. out. Na lang. It was no, yeah. but then you know, naman kasi health is where you wanted to end up at. Yes. And and related to that, um, so you're talking about medicine being a traditional thing. It's more of like mm-hmm. looking at the data that's already there. Diba? If you want to be a mm-hmm. doctor, what studies are created? Now mm-hmm. in public health, are you is it more of like a futuristic thing? Like if doctors have to look at the past on what's worked before, are you mm-hmm. Am I right to assume that you're out there figuring yeah. out new ways and yeah. stuff? Not just for yeah. the doctors, but for people in general. Yeah, definitely. So just to give you like a definition of public health, it's the science and art of preventing disease and promoting health. So to kind of bridge that, you don't just need doctors in public health. Of course, they're very important. But it would really be a mix of researchers, data scientists, statisticians, yeah. epidemiologists, even graphic designers, accountants, engineers. Like you would all need that to work in public oh. health. Because it's it's not just a science. Um, yeah. And going back to what you said a while ago, parang if a doctor is curing one person or preventing the disease of one person, public health is more like tens and thousands, hundreds, Macro. millions of people. Yeah. So you're going Use to find right. out. Okay, nice. <laughs> you're going to find out like, okay, which interventions work for this specific community or which, parang, which activities would work for this certain context. And that's sort of what I'm doing right now yeah. with the studies I'm um, currently okay. in and conducting. So, if I could use an analogy, the Avengers, they have S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, Avengers, you think of Iron Man, diba? Captain America, Thor. Okay. Mm. Well, well, Thor would be Thor regardless. But, like, Captain America, he 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 needed the the people to make the S.H.I.E.L.D. to inject him with the, the like, mega steroids. Iron Man needs his, he needs pepper pots, he needs his Stark Industries, all those stuff. Yeah. In this health in this health sector, you're kind of like an agent Coulson. That's his name. You're you're more of the like you're not the like we, we just we we think health oh doctor sang yun eh. But yes. there are so many yes. other people involved in this whole yeah. um yeah. Wait, well, what do you mean? career? No, no, no. This whole industry, industry yes, rather. Yes, correct. Um of health. Uh, okay. I I would say um definitely, you know, Nurses, doctors, med tech, they're frontliners. But we're kind of like the back end or the policy, the top down of things. Yeah. So, you know, with certain policies that we need to propose to the government, etc. But we try to find these things out from doctors, from nurses, from um, you know, barangay health workers. So yeah. we still we still work still with them. them. It's yeah, it's just <laughs> you got top level. Yeah, yeah. I'm it's not like, such you know, a the people I'm not the in Marvel shield. Fan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do, do you not do you not watch? But you know Avengers. I mean, I do. You know, I do. You know but... the man. Yeah, it's okay. You don't yeah. need to know the specific guy. Like, imagine like in 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 any movie, the man with like spies and stuff. But there are people in the computers yes. like oh. telling you where to go. The but. It's not the man like they'll always, you know, it's not like every day they're yeah. gonna get to talk to yes. Black Widow. Right? Like, like it's but they, their their work yeah. is still super in, like, the the Avengers won't get to do the <laughs> things they do if they didn't have the, Correct. Uh, Correct. the public health oh, workers. <laughs> what's what's her name? Um that girl in Black Panther. What's her name? The girl the in sister? Black Panther. The you sister of Rihanna. The sister of oh, I get you. Yeah, yes. The girl, her, Shoot, her. her. <laughs> oh, oh, you know your, I don't know yes. that. You know your Marvel. Because, okay. Uh, yeah. So, but she's like innovating things. Yeah. She's giving him everything. Like the she tech. would do the research, give her the tech. Uh-oh. But of course, Black Panther. It's see, Black Panther. <laughs> yeah, he was. He's the one. Yeah. See yeah. T'Challa. He's the one who's gonna fight and whatever. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's bad. Like that's the best because yeah, I, yeah. I watch. And, <laughs> Uh-oh. But I you, you know that name. Demand. I also forgot her name. And Suri, Suri, Suri. Yes, yes. Like Suri. Suri. But Suri on the ba- in the battlefield, 
med support, diba? When when ano, when Michael B Jordan was fighting her, wag ha tago siya agad. But anyway, that's not the point. Um, <laughs> Grabe naman to. Well, Shepherd, hindi ako like, you know, I, I would be able to operate. You're not gonna go so, in the hospital yeah. and inject people. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how to are you licensed to like I don't think you need a license to inject sure. like the COVID oh, um, vaccine. Can you do it? No, you... no. I think no. you need to be like a med tech, but oh, okay. I, I can't. Okay, okay. Um, okay. like the most I could do is get people's BP. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> but um, I, we needed to do that in health side. But aside from that, huh. I really don't do know. And the... I think I went through CPR, like oh. yung Red Cross training for you, you know how like a <laughs> World Youth Day thing. Like I was required. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, one of the, so, it's one of the uh, games. It's one of the activities in the side. Yeah, yeah, just so you know, when we go to Spain, parang if yeah. somebody faints, kaya mo na staying alive, staying uh, alive. Mm, mm, the <laughs> office. Is that what they teach also in Red Cross? Yeah. What's the BBM? Basta I whatever staying know. alive BBM know. is. Wow. Have you, you never, have you ever had to do, the, like, have you ever had to, what's it, what? perform CPR no. or like Heimlich maneuver? Think, no, thankfully Never, because I don't think I'll be confident enough. Ah, okay. But you know, like with anything, parang you ask me about COVID stuff, but I, I, I just, I just know that because it's the research I do get. Yeah. But I can't, I, I can't freaking write on a piece of paper yeah. and. <laughs> too that, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be like, I don't take this, take that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I would say I have knowledge just because yes, if you it's. Do. I'm not if it's a study I needed to do. Shamper, I I, yeah. I have to research and read thousands yeah. of pages of whatever. So yeah. Wait, sorry. Um just answer this quickly. Do you enjoy that reading so much stuff? <laughs> I enjoy my job. It just comes with it. So <laughs> no, it's one of those it, but it's not like, yeah, I got a thousand pages to read. <laughs> no, I mean I like studying, so it okay. comes with it. But yes. The read high. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes but, it's too much. Like I, I I if I could take a break or if yeah. I could like sparks notes certain <laughs> journals, I would. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But it comes um, to that. Touching on wait, I, I just wanted to I had one here at the can you when you said I I always I always ask you health stuff. I don't think you, you're aware Eka, of how many times I've uh even used you in my in the family, oh, no. in the dinner conversations. Because we'd always, you know, when when then COVID was, I'm not gonna Sorry, again, tita, again. Tita. It's always like, and it's always like, it's it's news from Facebook or Viber. I don't know, man, de mm. ba? For like, oh, eto friend in health. Because it's either say, oh, you're my doctor friend or my med student friend or my friend in health. That's just you. <laughs> I think you're my only friend in health. But you do the, you, you do your you do your research, man. But anyway, going going back, um. So this is also a recap episode for the entire um, med series, and like I said, um, with my past series recap e- episode, I like to take this episode as like a modern family episode. Um, you can watch any random modern family episode, and it's still okay. Yeah. But if you yes. watch it from the start, you're gonna get appreciated better. So if you guys are watching this now, and this is the only episode you've you've ever seen, okay, gang, but watch the past two episodes. To understand, to appreciate this more, I'm um, gonna talk about like I wanna I wanna discuss uh, and just kind of explore my thoughts on mm-hmm. um, the episode with Gio Ilagan first, who's a mm-hmm. fourth year med student, and then Dr. Guy Lorenz, an oncologist. And it's mm-hmm. actually it's actually related to what we were talking about a while ago when it comes to career. Because the mm-hmm. one of my biggest takeaways, which I found really interesting, with Gio, is that he is still choosing between vlogging and med school. So it's even yeah. more drastically different than yours. Eh? Yours is still mm-hmm. in health, diba? Right? But yes. then it's doctor or um, public health like, to do research. Mm-hmm. But this one is vlogging versus med school. Like, mm-hmm. I want to know, have you ever, do you have any other career in mm-hmm. your head that you, you were thinking of doing that was totally different? from health yeah i wanted to go into fashion so before i sense. yeah <laughs> so before i went to college i was working for candy magazine really? i don't know if you know that in high yeah. school in high school so to work in high school? Okay. well i was part of <laughs> candy council of cool <laughs> wait sorry what again again candy council of cool 
Yes, that's what it's called. Did Candy you name that? Council of Cool. No, grabe. Like, <laughs> I was the 10th bachelor of mine. So, mm. I didn't name it, but it's it's like, you know, they get high school students to be part of like the Candy editorial team. So, if you watch The Bold Type, I kind of was like, sorry, Jane. Sorry, what show again? The Bold Type. What, what's this? I, I've heard of this. Do the Bold Type on Netflix uh, with Scarlet Magazine. About the three girls okay. um, who works in... Okay, I'm sure you've seen that poster of the bold type. Cause yeah, but I never. Yeah. Yeah, or your I'm friends watch market. it. Okay. Yeah, but if anyone here loves the bold type, I was <laughs> yeah. kind of living the bold type life. Parang after class, 4:30, I would go straight to uh, Robinson's forum, the Summit Building. Like, imagine Ooh. you're 16 years old and you're just like, I'm walking in a fashion Office. magazine. Yeah, I'm gonna oh, choose the layout. Or I was styling even at such a young age. And I was seriously considering shifting my course because I I felt like I just wasn't good <laughs> in math and chem yeah. <laughs> first year. Kaya I wasn't going out that much no more first year. Because I really had to adjust. Like yeah. I, I I would think I'm intelligent. <laughs> I I'd like to believe I am, yeah. but at that time, starting, I was I was really adjusting to Ateneo. I was really adjusting to living on my own. And then the way they taught in Ateneo, uh, you know, parang, and the math that they taught it was much more difficult than my high school. <laughs> um, right. So let's not name my high school. But, uh, people so find, let's if, people, if people really want to know where you studied in high school, they'll find out. <laughs> but anyway, you guys have to search. Yeah. Out. Yeah, I mean, I I love my professors, but I I just felt like it was much harder, and I was taking a harder math course, talaga for health high. So yon, but I went to tutor, I went to, as in I had to adjust. Uh-huh. And at that moment, I was still working in candy, like they were getting me to free freelance uh, to style. So I was styling candy cuties, I was styling oh, editorials, and I was doing life. that while. Yeah, I was doing that while in college and high school. So mga fourth year high school and until mga second year college, I was doing that. Yeah, and then Candy had the shift. So they were just purely online. Then Shempre, I, I also couldn't commit because of school. Like I needed to be serious if I wanted to get in med that time. But yeah, that was the other career that I was That's before I met really you. considering. Yes, that was before you met me. But I was really considering fashion before. I was going to shift to, um, I think, either ABCOM or like a management course and then just mm-hmm. take, you know, like marketing or whatever yeah. after <laughs> fashion. Yeah. Ganyan! We have a fashion because, course at the day. Because I was really ako uh, my first year. And wow. that was something I was passionate about. And I really had the time of my life working with, you know, Shemper, these are older people. And then they would invite me to parties, store openings, like that kind of thing. So if Uso yung influencers non, to be honest, I really think I would have been an influencer. Like, <laughs> yeah. I would have taken so much OOTDs. I would have taken, you know, yeah. yeah, like I would have vlogged the blog and stuff. Like, I, fine. I had a fashion blog before. <laughs> I said a blog, blog? Yeah, as in blog blog. Is it still alive? <laughs> I I locked it now. It's private now. Uh, okay. Oh, sayang. But okay, I respect that. Yeah. That's interesting. Wait, were were you getting paid at least in high school? Yes, I was. Okay, so okay, I really saved up. Like I had the I think well, this is coming from you. I'm sure you're more financially literate. <laughs> but I think I was at such a young age because I would learn how to save. I would learn how to splurge. And then parang, I would you, really I talk love to that. You learn how to splurge. I love that. I yeah. Love that. And I would really talk to my mom. And at that time, I wasn't, I didn't trust myself in the first few years saving. Mm-hmm. So she would keep it for me. And then we I would look at my savings by third year. Oh, yeah, I could travel now. I could go to the beach without having to not eat <laughs> because I was skimping on my baon. Um, wow. And it was because I had that styling job when I was young. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say one thing. Lang. Um, with uh, I, I understand it. Like, if I was Candy Magazine, but I, I know when I hear Candy, because I hear, keep hearing of keep hearing candy cuties. Honestly, yeah. I really want, I that was one of my like, well, I hopefully one day I'm getting candy cute. But then it's not <laughs> something that I would like apply for. 
and be like, I want to be Candy Cutie. I was just kind of hoping maybe someone there yeah. can be cute and then they're gonna, I don't know. I don't know how you get elected Except, or yeah. nominated well, for those type of stuff. Usually they ask us, like, if you know somebody. Yeah. Ganyan. So That's how they, they get would, it. Yeah, they would get people in high school or in college parang nominating yeah. the crush ng bayan of the universities okay, okay. or the high school. I didn't meet you. <laughs> okay lang then, if I met you before, at least now, I can be like, I wasn't a candy cutie. Just, I didn't know the right people. It has nothing to do with my face. But then, th- that's also good. Huh, for I just want to like, this is totally unrelated <laughs> the whole conversation. But for them to get high school girls, because it's weird. Imagine yeah. these people, like, imagine people our yeah. age, like yeah. looking through high schools and be like, oh, cute. Yeah. Cute. Let's get yeah. this underage person, well, right? There are nominations. So you submit your friends. So, syempre, like high school the girls. The readers. Yeah, high school girls would like nominate their. I never want to nominate. Playing yeah. MU Ganya. <laughs> mm, okay. but, but yeah, uh, usually they would ask our opinion. So, uh-huh. uh, you know that scene in Princess Diaries, too? Did you watch that? Continue. I don't. I probably. I probably. No, don't. they were sitting down and they were looking at the different prince, na single, na bachelor, na prince. Mm, I'd, I'd, I'd like to say I remember this scene. We I, had that scene in Candy, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" Wow, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> this is probably the life. Yeah, <laughs> like looking at cute boys from different universities. But I'm from the south, so mm-hmm. I wasn't. Exposed. I studied in a co-ed high school. What do you mean you weren't exposed? Weren't aren't you more exposed because you were in a co-ed school? I mean, I studied in the co-ed. I studied in a co-ed high school, but I didn't need to look far. <laughs> like, uh, yes. So, parang you, you're you're the pool of boys was just yes, possible. it's just them. Yeah. Uh, okay. Wow. <laughs> and then health. This is so wow. I'm learning so much. Thank you. Um, with with the with the vast difference of that though, do do you have any regrets? Do you like still get to? Because I. I I'd like to believe that your career is going to be mainly one thing, like one industry, mm-hmm. one type of work, but that doesn't mean that you can't live out your different passions in yeah. life. So uh, like, like how Gio gets to, he, now because it, it mixes it, he vlogs about med mm-hmm. school. So he's getting to do, at least until he graduates, no? and if he continues to do it, like he still gets to do, even if there's totally different things, he gets to do them. But then for yeah. you, like you've already made a decision. I mean, although it's not too late, you can still go back. But I feel like you're pretty set with this. Yes. Like, do you still get to? Do you have any reg- one? Do you have any regrets? Na parang uh, sometimes, baha fashion would be fun. And two, like mm-hmm. how, how do you still sort of live that passion out yeah. in your life today? Uh, I don't have regrets just because I find my job really fulfilling. And when I was choosing between fashion and public health, for me, it was really how, you know, every day, how could I find my job fulfilling? And like a part of me and my, you know, civic duty, social issues kind of self, I wanted a job that I could say, hey, I'm doing good. I'm doing good in general, you know, like I am helping people and not just to make myself feel better, but also that is the mission or that's co- it's kind of the mission f- or my mission. And I don't have regrets just because I thought that. Um, and I, I still love the shop. <laughs> I, <laughs> I still love to shop. I love helping my friends choose their outfits. I, I do that with you. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's right. And, in, oh, yeah, yeah, in Orsen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I should do that more. And, we should do that more. I should ask you for more. Yeah, so I I love, you know, my friends always come to me too if they have questions in fashion. And I'm still updated with um, fashion trends, designers. And, you know, if I want to splurge, I kind of look through some designer stuff, or even just clothes that I want to buy. So I don't regret anything just because, one, I find my job really fulfilling. And also I find, especially now, parang there's really that purpose na, you know, public health is in the spotlight with COVID. Public health is in the spotlight with all the health issues. Mm-hmm. And I love that challenge. I love that pressure. I love that parang stress. Yeah. Um, and I and on the other side of things, I think I could still be able to express myself and have that art 
of fashion with my own, with the way I dress. And, you know, sometimes at work, <laughs> they ask me to like, okay, how do we power dress when we have presentations? Oh. Like, that's really important because we're such a young group of people. And we this is present... Epimetics. Yeah, it's epimetric. So we're such a young group of people and we're like mostly girls and then uh, we just have like a couple of doctors. So, you know, as much as I could say, you know, whatever, we could look whatever or however we want to look. Shemper, when you're presenting, you still need to, yeah, you you still need to dress a certain way or kind of want to present yourself a certain way to some audiences, to the more traditional audiences so yeah. so yo yeah, but uh, it's just fun i could still get the style of my co-workers that, oh, okay that makes it, it i mean like how i know you're making more sense and also um like now and I, and maybe your students then now no, they just see upper half but those days when i would see you teach in school there are a few profs like that i i, just, I remember this one out of the viewers that i was like okay this is fashion it was it was like a teal. Oh, I have something. It's probably the same color as this jug. You uh-huh. have this like it's kind of like green, but it was like your top and your your parang oh, like, yeah, my teal suit. I know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. I was like, okay, so you're still. I mean, that makes sense. Know, you you like fashion and then yeah, that it's it's the ano, like, combining. But anyway, my favorite thing about what you said, um, and why you don't have any regrets of that different. Of the different path you didn't take. Because whenever any person is gonna take a career path, they're mm. they're taking one career path and they're saying no to every other um mm-hmm. career path. Instead mm-hmm. of really worrying about did I take the right path by saying it did I make the right choice? It's really mm-hmm. because of like how you make do with that path you took, how you make do with that, how much you put in that choice you took. Yes. Like the reason why you said nga, the the reason why you know you don't have any regrets is because you like where you are. You're enjoying mm-hmm. uh where you are. And there's that mm-hmm. saying that the grass is greener on the other side. But I really think in this scenario, the grass is greener mm-hmm. where you fudge. The grass is water greener it? where you water. I was gonna say where you plant it. <laughs> The grass is greener where you water it. So, mm. but if Gio ends up going, you know, let's say he graduates, he he takes the board. I'd like to say board. Yes, board. Board. Yes. Bard. Bar is to go. Okay, okay. Yes. Board. Um, if he goes vlogging, it can still be as fulfilling or even more fulfilling depending on mm-hmm. what he what he puts into that. Yeah. So that's what you're doing now with the health. That. Yeah. So, I. I think also the way you look at it is your career is only an aspect of your life. And for me, it's like I am a public health researcher and what? Like it's never just I am, you know, with Gio's case, I am a doctor, period. It's never that. It's I am a public health researcher and a professor and a fashion stylist Mm -hmm. and, you know, a runner. I don't know. Like, you can Mm, be so many things. (laughs) (laughs) She a runner, she a (laughs) track star. You can be, you could be so many things. I think it's just really balancing, like, the percentage of how you want to be that person. So, Mm. I am, the ba? Parang, you're going to think, okay, I could probably go to the clinic but also after the clinic I could vlog and that I could edit at night and that's something how I'm living my own life right now with the different jobs that I'm taking it's like I am a manager in epimetrics and I'm also a professor and I'm also a daughter that that that's the same duty like yeah, I have yeah, to yeah. you know be, be at home since I'm an only child or and I'm also someone who likes working out and I think when you kind of box yourself and you introduce yourself with only your career I don't I, I don't think that's such a great way to introduce yourself just because your career is never your entire life or it shouldn't be I don't yeah. know. I, I, I would, this is the I wisdom. Would think. <laughs> this is the wisdom. I've been, this is why I all I've been going to you for advice through the years. Um, I, I no, th- that gave me an insight now, and it, it makes me more thankful in my situation. Because when I again I keep talking about this when I look at my peers, when I look at my brothers, like they, they have the clear mm-hmm. career, like yeah. it's the it's that big chunk of their life, and it's so evident yeah. what they do. 
it's actually a good thing that I have a lot. Like, I host, I do a podcast, mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I dance, I mm-hmm. DJ. Parang, yeah. I, it's, it's me having to always parang tell myself that no, it's okay that you're doing a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it just actually helped me make it more clear that I'm not my one job because I don't have one job. Like, I have a lot of it. And that, 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 that brings me to my next point. I want to ask you about this whole work-life balance. And in the, it, mm-hmm. it's very, we were forced to look at it during the pandemic on how we're mm-hmm. living our life. Now, I, I listened to this podcast. Fudge, fudge, I forgot which one. But they had a very interesting point. It's not my point. I'm not taking intellectual property over it. Um, that it's not, it's not any more work-life balance. Because that means mm-hmm. that your work is not your life and your life is not yes. your work. But you're separating. Yes. Even if the goal of work-life balance is to prioritize both. I think the mm-hmm. fact that you call it work-life balance, like, oh, that yeah. those are two separate things you have to balance. But I think now yeah. we're in a, a new age where it's more of like a, I think the term they used was holistic living. Like it's not mm-hmm. anymore, all right, it's time to work. All right, I'm done with work. Like it's, you're just living life. You live yeah. 24 hours a day and then you just, use it on different things. And it doesn't necessarily have to be anymore just, okay, this is for work. Okay, this is not work. Like, it's not just the distinction of those two things. Mm-hmm. I had to kind of sit myself through that or reflect the past, you know, year and a half just because I was going through meetings after meetings and then, you know, I would have meetings the entire day and then at night I would study and then I would film something for class and then I would grade and then I would go to another meeting and then another meeting. And then I didn't have that break before that after work, boom, I could call a friend, we could have dinner and then, you know, that's that's work-life balance. I could yeah. go out to Nokal and yeah. come home at like 2 a.m. and then the <laughs> next day, bam, bam, bam. Nice. Like, 6 a.m., I could go to the meeting or go to work. And I really had to think that that was really me separating my work and my life. Like, I okay. felt so miserable because I just wish I was always at the beach. I, I just wish I was, you know, <laughs> just going out, meeting friends. Okay. And the pandemic kind of made me realize, like, I could be in this uncomfortable phase just working without that break. But I love it. I started realizing that this is actually the job that I like because I didn't have that, you know, after work happy art anymore. Mm-hmm. But after work, I would just run. I would just work out. And then after that, I would study again. So parang nawala talaga yung life, right? Uh-huh. Because... We're just at home and there was nothing fun at home. No offense to my parents. <laughs> Sorry, mom, if you're listening. But, you know, there was nothing fun. I am glad I'm just close to my neighbors. But aside from that, especially in you know, the first three months of ECQ, I was really just of, so of uncomfortable. Of 2020. Of 2020. Oh, yeah. Gosh, we've been through a lot. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> and that's when I really realized that. I could live this type of lifestyle and I could continue working these jobs because it makes me happy. I removed all my quick fixes in the pandemic and I was just so contented working and trying to live a healthy lifestyle after because I didn't have those quick fixes. And then I realized parang dun ko lang na appreciate Yung job ko. Um, just because I didn't have quick fixes. Like, I just felt so miserable yes. before. And then, going back to the holistic life you were saying, parang, I could live this type of lifestyle. Um, I still don't go out. I would rarely go out. Probably, like, once a month with my friends. Weekly with my neighbors because they, they're just there. Uh, right? But, I removed my quick fixes. And then that's when I realized I'm pretty grateful for the jobs that I have. And this makes me me. Like, these things make me who I am. And yeah, I think that's when when you remove the distractions. For me, that was a distraction. I didn't realize at that time it was a distraction. But because I was in such a high, you know, going out, traveling, you know, <laughs> keep leaving my house 
I said yeah. every single month I would travel. I wasn't such a high that I would crash in a sense that I was miserable going to work. Um, but the pandemic removed that. Sorry, I was. <laughs> I, I wasn't. I, I wasn't that happy. I would say right now I am probably my happiest at work just because one again I found my purpose, and two I removed the distractions. Yeah. And I wish, or I don't know, maybe if people could. I think a lot of people quit their jobs Ren, during the pandemic yeah. or change yeah. their jobs yeah. because because they're they remove their quick fixes, they remove their distractions, and they realize I don't like I don't like my job at all. Yeah. But the opposite happened to me because I didn't have those highs. Like, okay, and, pag ato, I actually yeah, really like this. Yeah, and and that's where I that's kind great. of built my holistic life around. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> like the the quick fix thing, I mm. I have to say I'm kind of the same. Like I was just looking forward to the next party, the next yes. out of town trip. Mm-hmm. Like I I was constantly in the effort of pushing myself away, moving yeah. away from the house, from responsibilities. But when you're mm. kind of forced to just sit with it, you either realize that this one isn't for me, this isn't the yep. job I like, or yep. Hey, actually, this is okay. I don't need these quick fixes. Like I'd yes. still I still enjoy a night out, but parang I don't need them na paga as much. Do you yes. think though that sorry, go ahead. No, I was coming. going to say that, yeah, I was going to say like I wish I mean definitely we all wish COVID never happened, the man. Pero some reflection points here and there, and that's kind of where my reflection point was at. Na okay. <laughs> I like I like what I'm doing, pala. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's great. I'm so happy for you. And I, I, I think that this is a, I think this is a common, I think this is the time. What is it now? July. Oh, God, mm-hmm. my God, it's July 2021. <laughs> We're still here. But um, I, I would like to believe, um, that this is it. This is the. We're in the upward. I don't know. We're done with the rock bottom. We're going at least in the pandemic. You know, like hopefully, I would kid myself like, oh. I'm getting vaccinated this uh, this Saturday. You you just got fully vaccinated. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, I would think, like, yeah, this is it. But then I have to remind myself, Anton, this is it for this situation for the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Like there yes. are gonna be bigger pandemics. Hopefully not yeah. like a like a health pandemic, but like you'll be faced with bigger problems in the future, right. and then you deal with it then. But then I feel like we're in the we're finally seeing the the benefit, the the mm-hmm. good things that came out. Of the pandemic, I would say, say that it's still you still can't say you, you can't say that you know the the benefits outweigh the no. negative stuff. I mean, like, definitely not. Lives, people's lives is still yeah. like the most important thing. But yeah, well, yeah, we're here. Like the the mm-hmm. budget happened now, so I feel yeah. like it's time to sort of just maximize and reap the rewards of that. Like again, this is this is a this is like a hyperbole, um, hyperbol hyperbolic, um analogy or comparison I would get I really wouldn't believe it when I'd watch stuff like Shawshank Redemption or yung mga, basta people go to jail and they're like I was freed they're like that's when I found my inner peace I'm like yeah I don't, I don't need to go to jail to find that shit Parang, yeah naman nun, you have to go to jail for to to discover <laughs> to realize, something yeah. that mm-hmm. it's already in your head but parang you know it's not it's not jail i'm not i'm not in prison but in a sense we kind of all were that we mm-hmm. we couldn't live the lives we we were used to the lives mm-hmm. we expected to have you have you were locked at home um mm-hmm. but i did find some of that that peace i did find some of that um that clarity that i feel like yeah. it's not i'd like to believe it's not me being like oh i'm a, a new version of a different person it's more of like i'm more Anton. I feel like I'm more Anton now. Like I'm, I'm more of the person. I I really like am. At or, peace? Yeah, like at peace. Like I, I'm more yeah. of the person I want to be. Um, mm. more of the person I kind of expect myself to be. Mm. Um, with those things. But I wanted to ask though. La- last thing on this on this thought. There's this quote. Eh, these two words that I uh, I saw this in a TikTok. I think. It's different if you ask the different generations. And these two words, like, they're all going to react very intensely about this, but then it differs. And you're going to tell, um, you can tell which generation is this. If you tell them the two words, I'm tired, 
this is what the, this is what the TikTok said. If you tell like the older generation, they're gonna tell you why. They're gonna tell you how they had it harder. How you're soft. You're complaining. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. you tell the younger, younger generation, they're gonna tell you how they're more tired than you. Like it's a competition. Mm-hmm. But if mm-hmm. you tell, parang if you tell this generation, I feel like our generation is kind of like join the club. Same. <laughs> when Same. You, when you hear I'm tired, yeah. how, how, what, what does it make you think? Same. <laughs> like you would just say, like, yeah, yeah. And it's, an, it's an acceptance, though. It's an acceptance yeah. that I think that's the best way to deal with it. I, you know, I think we're in that in between because mm-hmm. with our parents' generation and my students or the younger generation, You're, they're the like true we, Gen Z. Yeah, yeah. We need we needed to balance, or but we're in that in between. But we're balancing what our parents think and what you know, yeah. the the Gen Z generation <laughs> Gen Zs think yeah. and. Sometimes I would have to defend parang my I, w- I would have to defend it to my parents when they hear, you know, or they see like a viral TikTok uh-huh. video na napupunta sa Facebook. <laughs> Syempre, they they have their thoughts. Wait, and can you think of any? Are there any you want to stand out or the most recent? No, probably going back to uh, let's just say Zoom class, online school. Uh-huh. Parang I think generations would look at it differently. Some would say, at least you don't have to go to school. You don't mm. have to, right? You don't have to commute. You're not tired commuting, ganyan. But also, they don't understand how tired it is staring at your screen for so long. Even if nakaupo ka lang dyan, dude, that is a different type of tired. And that's a different type of focus. Because... You could fiddle with your phone. You could yes. chat with your classmate. And you're not... Sometimes you're not learning. And that's also what I feel with meetings. Sometimes when I'm in... When I go to face-to-face meetings, parang I can't Instagram story, check, mm-hmm. you know, t- Telegram. But you have to be in both generations' position to kind of understand that, right? Yeah. And I think where we are, parang we're balancing out. We're the transition. Yeah, we're balancing out what they think and also we're kind of telling them na, you know, there's still grit, there's still discipline involved yeah, with certain things. Different. Yeah. And I, sometimes parang my thoughts and my opinions, it also it also goes to my parents' generation or it kind of goes to the Gen Z generation. I think I'm in between as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm trying to with I'm tired, I think our generation is just like, yeah. kind of, ako yan, me, me, me. Like, ako din eh, ganon. So, so yeah. With with that though, I mean, we're, we're really the transition, transitional generation. Like, mm. we're the ones who grew up without phones, but at an early age, we got phones. But when we had phones, parang, I'm really thankful I didn't have social media in grade school with the, uh, with how, Conscious. I until, parang ngayon pa lang, I'm kind of like, I think medyo nag-gets ko na tong social media thing. It doesn't represent re- fully who I am. I don't need mm-hmm. to get, I shouldn't get my self-worth and validation. This is 24-year-old, yeah. ano, me, ah, freaking 14. Yeah. I had there was social media not 14 years old. If you're like 10 years old, that was your, you know, you see how many people mm-hmm. like your post and stuff. God, I don't want to, I don't want to know what it's like to go through that. Mm-hmm. But, like I'm in the generation who iba iba if you text in class compared to if, mm-hmm. if you text on Zoom. Mas masaya pa nito yung yeah. mas <laughs> yung 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 fear yung excitement yung exhilaration. I I would say I never texted in high school. Like I was super goody to shoes high school. Really? Yeah. Like I would rarely bring my phone. If I brought my phone, naka off uh, yah, not even silent. In, bawal ba in yeah. your high school? In your unnamed yeah. high school? Sa amin pwede. <laughs> Ati nyo ang gab. Pwede ka magdala ng phone. Tapos pwede mo yata gawin, pwede mong gamitin sa breaks pero hindi pwede sa class. Labo. Oh, even breaks, bawal. I said, yeah. we had this, ano, we had this desk where, it is the oh. table and then there's, a, there's like me, a yeah. drawer for the books. Yeah. And for, well, me, like, that's where I put my feet. <laughs> that's where I leave my hands. And I knew that, I, I, 
I knew that things were changing because in first year, second year, I had the phone na may keypad. So, dagi mag-text. Nababasa ko, di ba? Mm. How many presses that for it to become a letter H yeah. and a letter E, di ba? Mga ganun. <laughs> Tapos, when I got the hand-me-down of my mom's iPhone 3, that's when you're like, oh, things are different. Kasi I'd have to wow. peek. Like, touch yeah. screen na eh. Hala so, na. Iba na eh. I know any- you could text before, so... <laughs> <laughs> With just the button, yeah. Oh, as a as a prof though, um, mm-hmm. in when it was still in person, can you yeah. tell when someone's texting? Yeah, I could tell if someone's on social media, but where where I thought walang signal, so. <laughs> where, where did you teach? What what what? Um, what? Sec- CTC something? no CTC first floor. Do you know that CTC the big room walang signal? Um, oh yeah, I had marketing there. Right? Ooh, boring. So, yeah, signal. yeah. <laughs> no one near the computer there. room. No yeah, one near the yeah, computer yeah. room. Walang signal. So, parang if they're not connected, hindi sila nakaka social media. Yeah, my God. I really <laughs> thought I could outsmart my teachers. Like, they know. They know if you're texting. They know if you're... Well, I mean, you would because you're, yeah, I you're would. near the age. Naman. Sometimes in Shepra, like if I go around and then they have group works, like naka Facebook sila. I, I don't mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, now I'm, I'm, I want to move to the next point. Um, and this is this is for for Gio's episode and also for Doctor um, Gary Lorenzo. In terms of Gio being in this, he's also in this this, this unique generation of Google Docs. Yung mga natuto um, online. He he mentioned how he really feels like he's kind of cool. Like the, him and his batchmates, they're all kind of cool with this shit. They're all really trying to figure things out. And then I thought, I think everybody is trying to figure things out. The same way how, although us being in a transitional generation, we, we have our parents' parang values to right? grow up, but we also have the, the tech savviness of the younger people. Like We have all that information and knowledge, but having that much, like knowing all that shit makes, makes me feel even more kugugas. And I mm-hmm. think it's, I think it's the acceptance of you're always going to be cool, guys. Because when Dr. Gary, I feel weird saying Dr. Gary because he's Tito Gary <laughs> too. He's always my hi, Tito. Um, even at this age, na, the stage of his career, like, mm-hmm. would you imagine if you're like 50 plus and then you've had decades of experience, you're a well-renowned you know, professional in your field, do you still mm-hmm. need to go to school? Like, Do you still need to gain more knowledge to be better at what you do? do you, what, what do you think? You know, it really is what will make someone wake up every day. Like, I know it's that cliche saying na parang, you know, you need something to inspire you. Like, the reason for you to wake up every day. And I think when you are at that age, which I believe I will also be like that yeah. <laughs> with the amount of studying I like to do, you would just want to keep learning. And that kind of, is one so inspirational na after decades of experience and yeah. you know going through so many things they still have the drive to study um but also that goes to the second part na it's because they see what they're doing is valuable or they see that parang learning more will parang they would need to learn more to do more show more value yeah um right. and that differs per person because if you think that you don't need to go to school anymore to kind of give more value then that's on your discretion right but some people would want that pa para some people would just be more confident or would kind of be this and this pa so going back to dr gary like he wanted to start going into public health and that's because as a consultant or rather as a clinician he kind of sorry can you define was clinician so, the, yeah. those are, so, are those the doctors and yes the doctors who see patients okay. yes um as a clinician siguro he already got the groove of it as an oncologist and shempre he was already seeing patients here and there and then he wanted something more and i guess that's why he wanted to learn study more, more yeah. yeah and study some more and you know that's why i always tell people who ask me like should i 
take further studies, I would really say it's up to you. Because if you think you are already giving value to people or to your industry without studying, then you don't have to. But if you want more skills or if you want to be more confident learning or specializing in something, then you really have to study. Because... Or, or, you know, studying could not be going to school. Like, it could be taking a short course or it could be taking a certificate course. But the fact that so many people are interested learning more, I think that it's up to them. <laughs> and this really shifted my, my per- perception of learning, of, of mm-hmm. school, of studying. Like I said kanina, I was like, when I graduated, I uh, Johan to Because when mm-hmm. I, I, I did the traditional school everything like the one the, the, the big school and when ever since i was studying it was always a goal eh? like i have to study this these many years i have to pass all these tests i have to do these things and then i'll get to the mountain top when i graduate like it was a destination but now mm-hmm. i'm i'm learning that learning is not a destination thing it's really it's really that process of learning something every day and i think that it's not there's no goal eh? like yeah. yeah, you want to get better, but there's no goal. It's not like a, it's not the journey where there is an end destination. Like you just yeah. keep doing. It. I feel like the the moment you you feel like you've learned enough, you don't want to learn anymore. Mm-hmm. Fine, that's the, I don't want to say that's when you stop living, but but <laughs> something to that, that that's too intense. Eh? Like you can still live without you yeah. know taking courses, but fine, that's the like with, with the whole success thing. Mm-hmm. I would say that you shouldn't be chasing. Um, you shouldn't be chasing a goal. You should just be enjoying and focusing on that everyday thing of each new lecture you have, each new yeah. insight you pick up. And yeah. all the success, all that shit is just going to be a byproduct. Na lang. Na, mm-hmm. um, yeah, go ahead. I feel like you have a, you have a thought coming. I'd like to hear this thought. Uh, yeah, I was just going to add na it's really how you kind of check yourself, your skills. You kind of need to do like I don't know what term to use not naman reflect kasi, but it's it's really learning what you're still lacking learning the gaps in your technical expertise or mm. right parang the future that you want to the future work you want to go into and I think that's what makes learning different individual. That's why it doesn't always have to be I'm going to take a master's. Ito na yon, right? It's it's not na um, I'm going to I need an MBA to be this certain thing. But if I never studied that and I have zero knowledge, then I'm going to take an MBA. But you know, if I've been managing a company already without an MBA for 10 years, I would say I'm confident enough to apply to this job as a manager um, without an MBA. So yeah, it, it's really learning to know the skills you're lacking and finding the curriculum that's best. Because versus people going into medicine or law school, I felt like I didn't have a curriculum in life. Like I I didn't have this year two after work, what next? Like, you know, like what what, what do I have to do next? Uh, I didn't have that. So I really needed to be so open-minded and I have to face reality that, Ekai, you're not good in, like, you're not good in statistics or Ekai, you're not good in... As a researcher, public I health. wasn't. <laughs> no, that's why now? I studied. Ah, okay, <laughs> that's why <okay>. I studied. <laughs> so, so para not to be like, you know, right after school or right after college, rather, I, I knew that I, I needed to face reality. Um, and if you kind of don't, I don't know, if ma pride ka or you're not humble enough to admit your flaws and your where you're lacking, it's going to be difficult for you to be a lifelong learner <laughs> or yeah. to want to keep learning. Yeah. Last thing I'm going to add to that, that how you have to keep learning. Because uh, one point that he said, it, how why oncol- oncology is such a, it's an ever changing field because there's always going to mm. be new studies. And it's not mm. just with oncology. Like it, That is so clear. Like, you know, I'm pretty sure in a few years, there's going to be like a new, there could be like a new way to treat cancer or these new different approaches to that problem or that situation. But 
the world is always going to be changing. Eh. So mm-hmm. I think it's our jobs. Like we have to keep up and learn. Yeah. Like, I yeah. felt that working in working in media. I I kind of exactly. I kind of understand the TikTok <laughs> language now, and I know how like there are some that's a TikTok line or that's a TikTok thought or way of um speaking. Like when I yeah. would make when I would make some like nah how how I apply it is. I, I, I didn't really, I didn't like TikTok at first. I was like, oh my gosh, it's another social media <laughs> platform. Yeah. I gotta learn this new thing. I just got Instagram. Um, but then there's this annoying, like how I, my brother, my eldest brother, I worded it nicely. Because I had to edit this video for us before. And how I edited it was very, there's so many cuts in between. Like, <clears throat> it, it doesn't sound like someone naturally speaking. Because yeah. someone who naturally speaks, there's ums, there's pauses, yeah. but there it's like it's all the words. It's like you're reading, but you're, it's like you're just reading his thoughts, but mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. hearing it. That's how you edit. Like, like that. That's when I felt like, yeah, I gotta get on this TikTok thing. Like I gotta understand how people communicate with the with the ever you know one the world is changing and then people's attention mm-hmm. spans are getting shorter. So you gotta find mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. How do you deliver what you want to deliver to the audience you want to deliver it to? Yeah, so the start of the pandemic, so the I'm a public health researcher, we needed to do data collection. Maybe just to explain what I do, we uh-huh. literally conduct surveys or research going to different houses or means and um, talking to the barangay health workers and Usually, we would fly. That's why I was always gone than before. Because oh, we would word. go to the field. I mean, <laughs> you local. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Wait, so, sorry. Like where? I remember only like, like one Leite. province. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, Leite, CDO. So, we would go talaga face-to-face. We have to collect data. Um, and that totally changed. We can't check if the data collectors are actually getting the surveys. Before we had to do that, or we can't check, you know, if people are being interviewed. And Shemper, if these are in rural cities, mm-hmm. it's so difficult. So going back, we needed to learn how to train people online. So imagine oh. we were talking to we were talking to people who didn't know how to use Zoom, or we're still trying to use Zoom at the beginning of the pandemic. And then we would Yeah, we would train our field staff online using Google Meet, using Google Drive. And they're not sanai because before, we would just give them papers. And then, Shemper, we would scan it or they would LBC it back, right? Mm. So so these are things na... (laughs) Yeah, Shemper, because it's a household survey. So they would LBC it back and then we would shred it. Scan and code shred. But now, we need to to use cell phones, tablets. And... This is something that if <laughs> you're impatient, voila, you're going to be spending so much money and you'd be exposed pa because you would force yourself to go on the field yeah. to collect data. So you know, and I think in every industry or whatever age you are throughout the pandemic, you really needed gonna, to learn to adapt. Did, yeah. Did it become easier though? Now, I think, is the transition mm-hmm. done? Are they still learning? The people you're working with, are they still learning how to use Zoom and stuff or do they kind of have the hang of it now? Yeah, they kind of know how to use Zoom already. But yeah. Chempre, nothing is... You, they will always get disconnected. It's <laughs> So like a one-hour interview would be like two hours misan because people oh, would get okay. disconnected. Is it more efficient um, We could schedule things because like it could be meeting after meeting after meeting. Yeah. So interview after interview. So technically, it would be more efficient. But mas matagal nga lang because of technical issues. Sometimes, okay. you know, we can't present, etc. But yeah. do you prefer like when, let's say, two years from now, when supposedly mm-hmm. things are paranormal na? Are, yeah. Do you think it's going to be done this way? A mix of it? Or are you going to go back to going there? I think a mix. So I think... There are some things to say that we really can't afford to do it on Zoom. So, you know, mm. meeting the mayor or you know, courtesy yeah. call, sometimes you have to do that. Um, so it's going to, yeah, <laughs> it can't be that now. Right. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, training people, I am just going to take a video, send it to them. And oh, that's <laughs> nice. na sila. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's more efficient. I think this is the, the strongest point. It, it doesn't have... It's it's not about career. It's it's really about life. Eh? The, my my favorite moment in my 
my episode with Dr. Guys when we talked about death. Because that, that's really what I was expecting. Like, I'm going to talk to an oncologist, someone yeah. who talks about, who deals with death so much. Like, and, he, and it's not that, not the way people in funerals, funeral houses, funeral homes, funeral, but the ones who deal with funeral dead people. Homes, like, it's not, yeah. it's, he's dealing with, people who are alive, alive. but they're kind of I don't want to say that they're about to die but I mean your your patients are are cancer patients like you deal mm-hmm. with he deals with death so much and when he said that death is beautiful because these people have a genuine acceptance or when he said that mm-hmm. this patient of mine has a smile that's sweeter than mine so far, what what do they have that I don't and I was like what? This is the moment I was like, <laughs> this is why this is this is why I, I asked you to be here. Like yeah. this is the this is when I was hoping to get and everything. That one really, that one really shifted my perspective. Like it's a you can be really successful. You know he's one of mm. these top oncologists and stuff. But then like, it's very humbling to be able to to get that insight to mm. to deal with that and with with something as grave as death. I think nobody can prepare you for that. And no matter what type of job you have, no matter yeah. what sort of training you have, like just that perspective on death. I think it, it goes back to what we were talking about eh, with this pandemic. It's the, you didn't have any more your quick fixes. Like you kind of just mm-hmm. accepted the situation of the pandemic. It's the same mm-hmm. way how I would think, I wouldn't, sorry, maybe not the same way, <laughs> a similar way how these people who are you know they're they have a very very finite amount of time left alive it's when they accept that that's when something really beautiful happens i i found that yeah i just if you guys haven't seen that just check out the clip on the on the podcast instagram that one really that one really moved me and it really Probably gave me perspective on on some certain things. Now, oh, I know, like it's kind of the same way how when people say Filipinos are like the happiest people, one of the happiest people, even if like poverty is very intense here, the right? quality mm. of life isn't that good, but you're happy regardless, despite it, because look at you just accept the you accept the bad shit that life that's happening in your life right now, and it's when you accept that bad shit, something beautiful happens. He's someone already who's kind of, I mean, compared to us, but he he has, uh, he's kind of old already. And he said that he's, he said that I'm afraid to die and I wouldn't know how I'd react when it's my time. Mm-hmm. Because we're talking about that, I do have to ask this a bit. Like, how do you deal with that thought? Like, how is it something that you really thought about? Mm-hmm. Just, just your own, your own mortality. Yeah. Like, how do you, yeah. what do you think about that? I am really scared to die. <laughs> like I I really am scared to die. I think you know, you know when you enter a church and then they said like three wishes, you <laughs> your new church, you know that. Sorry, what's this? Are you are So we, if you, you enter you're Catholic, right? Yeah, and then oh, if you mind. enter a new church, you have to make like three wishes. Oh, I don't know this. Yeah, I don't know. It's like ha 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 or okay. I don't know. It's a self thing. Yeah, grab it. <laughs> it's not a self thing, but yeah, I would always have like one wish. Like I don't want, I don't want a painful, shocking death. Like I want, oh. I would always pray that it's you know, young. I'm gonna die in my sleep. It's uh-huh. a peaceful death because I'm really scared of dying. I would, to the point that okay, I don't know if I'm the right person to talk about this, but I. <laughs> have everything planned out just because I'm so scared to die. And in a sense, like, I'm so scared na with people left. As in may Google Doc ako of what people will do and how my funeral is gonna be. <laughs> Wait, really? Who has, do, do your parents... Yeah. Oh, kind of... Do your parents have access to this? Um, kind of weird if you my, ask your parents. What if, like, I have two friends who has access to it or okay. who has access to my laptop and has access to my Google Drive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because wow. I am that scared to die out of nowhere. 
like I am that scared to die out of nowhere to the point that I mean you know me I like as much as I like to have fun and I mean going this entire podcast I seem very serious in some parts but you know I <laughs> I'm really very serious about or prepared or organized uh-huh. rather about certain things yeah but with with, with that though, <laughs> like you said that you're 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 so scared you you made this Google Drive this Google yeah. Doc. What, Doc what are you scared about I. One, I'm scared to die because I don't know what's out there. Like, I don't know. It's really just not knowing where I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. Or not knowing if there is life after death. You know, the Bible can say so much. Or (laughs) the the energy, the universe could say so much. But nobody knows until they're there. Um, And I think preparing that Google Doc (laughs) kind of... Is my way of dealing with it. I know it's kind of morbid, but I I mean probably just to share. I got it from my parents just because I'm an only child. They have a Google so Drive too. my parents I don't know if this is allowed to say, but like my parents has like they have fixed everything already because I'm an only child. Mm-hmm. Like to be honest, anything can happen at any time, right? Like they're growing yeah. old. And because I need to be on top of things, like practical reasons like naming the house yeah. the money uh-huh. etc oh. like they prepared everything but I also think it's because it's my parents way of knowing they'll be okay after so the second point is I'm scared because I don't know how people I would leave would deal with my death and Ooh. that is yeah so one part is me not knowing where I'm going but also the other part is I don't want the people that I would You're leave behind. Yeah, to grieve so much, to be so confused, to usually when people die or syempre sana naman I'm old na no. <laughs> sana naman I have kids, a family or at least <laughs> I don't know, staff, employees to help me. <laughs> I was waiting here. Kids or at least I was like, well, what's 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 the at least what's after kids? Okay, yeah, staff employees. You know, staff employees to help <laughs> in your me company. manage uh-huh. in my company. I don't know, sana. Um, but that was my way of dealing with not knowing how they're going to deal with it. Parang mm-hmm. fixing everything puts me at peace. Now, at least, fine. Yeah. I don't know where I'm gonna go, but Shemper, I can't. I can't. I can't help them anymore if they're grieving my death. Yeah. But at least I know. <laughs> but at least I know, like that while you were what? alive, you, you got to prepare for that, na. Yeah, like they would know where to get my money. They would know what I want them to do with my money, like set up a foundation, you know that type of thing. Because a part of it is also like legacy with my parents, legacy with my name, and still helping people after. Because what I want is even if you know we're always indispensable, somebody else will replace us at work. I think it goes back to how did you. <laughs> Leave a mark. Oh my god, this is uh, a song. <laughs> what song is this? <laughs> <laughs> you know that um I'm back like I never left. <laughs> who who sang this? Who sang this? Um hold on. Can I do a quick Google search? Go, Just Google, cut this out. Just cut this Go while out. you're searching. <laughs> while, while you're no no go while you're searching. I'm gonna say my parents have the same. They have a they call it in, in case of emergency break yeah. glass. But it's not glass; yeah. it's an envelope. But yeah, we have that. But then for me, because as the bunso, like so, I just hope na sana naman there's no like flight where the four of them are there and ako lang na dito. Just ako yung maiyo, yeah. so I have to figure everything out. Because uh, if the if the pair if if my parents go, I mean, okay, uh, Marty, my other brother is kind of kind of assigned to be the one, the man. Ako nang yeah. ako yung taga host ng funeral, bago na lang yung <laughs> yung role ko. But like I get that it's the it's how you do. When I I would really get scared. I I th- that is that is the, my biggest fear. Honestly, just the thought of the afterlife and stuff. More mm-hmm. than ano, eh, painful death. Like before, I think of like how painful would it be to die from a gunshot? Oh. Like if you got shot in the head, they just they just die again. Yeah, you just die. Yeah. Like you can feel but- excruciating pain, but it can be like. Ganun lang. Tas, tas tapos na siya eh. So, I'm mm. not as scared of the painful death. I'm scared of like the eternity. 
afterwards. Yeah. But what I sometimes tell myself is like, oh, I'm thinking about this so much now. I'm not, I'm not going to sleep. I'm thinking about it so much. What is mm-hmm. my goal? Do I want an answer? Like, I don't even know what answer I want. Eh. I don't even know if I want everlasting happiness. I don't know if I want it to be just nothingness. Because yeah. I was totally fine before 1996, before I was born. <laughs> I was I was totally fine. So parang yeah. You say I'm not gonna be fine after, but it's that the de- so I I realized no. What I wanna my goal for all this is because I wanna manage my emotions. It's like as a human who goes through physical pain, you really mm-hmm. get stressed. You really get mm-hmm. you get scared. If I get mm-hmm. to solve those symptoms of not feeling scared anymore, not feeling worried, I'm good now. Yeah, that's good enough for me. And for you, it's with that Google Drive. Okay, sorry. Did you find? Yeah. <laughs> Of the artist. <laughs> Don't laugh. You know, this is my running playlist. Uh-huh. Glorious. <laughs> Bye. Maclemore. Ah. Because there's a, there's a part na parang, Yeah, there's a part that... <laughs> Please don't laugh. But it's something along the lines, like, so when I leave here on this earth, did I take more than I gave? And whenever I run and I hear that line, I'm just like... What? Yeah. And then the next one is, did I look out for the people or did I do it all for fame? Like, for some reason, Ooh. such a shallow, such a shallow. <laughs> and it's thought. not like you're like, you're, you're, <laughs> your, your job is the one that you want to be the most famous or. Yeah. But when I hear that, I'm just like, oh, shoot. If I'm going to leave this earth, like, am I leaving things? To make a difference, or parang am I readying the people around me to kind of Ooh. to kind of continue what I've been doing? So that's kind of just what I want. And this is one philo lesson before <laughs> I took Filipino philo, so I can't really say it. <laughs> Wait, you took Filipino philo? Yeah. Wow, is that a by choice or you just kind of got assigned? The by choice because I want to work in the government and I <laughs> wow. needed Respect. to learn Respect. anyways. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah. But it was something about, you know, when Are people you die. Filipino? No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> something along the lines. Now, when people die, there's always a part of them that will be left with the people they've interacted with. And that really got to me about death. So one part of death is just still my fear and anxiety where I'm going to go. But one one side of it is that I, you know, made an impact in someone's life. Or how could they continue with the impact that I made in their lives? So with the loss of so many people around me and the loss of like our sibling, not siblings, our relatives, I don't have siblings. Oh, okay. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Are you really an the only loss, child? The loss of like relatives, the loss of friends. Yeah. Um, you'd always carry, you know, a piece of them. And this was also yeah. on TikTok. But but uh, <laughs> um, but that's what I want to kind of be at peace with. Now, when I die, they're still continue, they, they'll still continue doing things. Because it's something that I've done, or yeah. it's for the good, so so there. That's um, beautiful. <laughs> like, like I don't want them to suffer. I want them to, you know, instead of focusing on parang grieving. Of course, son and man, people will grieve my death, yeah. but <laughs> but a part of it is like I want them to focus on what they could do after. And I got that from my parents because my parents were just like, use this money for this. Use this for this. Do this with this money. And I got kind of inspired and made it a bit more philanthropic. Nah, you know, if I don't end up with a family, like put up a foundation and this is the vision. This is the goal. You already this have is what that? people will do. Yeah. Wow. At this age, <laughs> I could care less, man. Like I'm thinking like, what do I want? Like and I would think as if if I pass away, I want some tradition. I want my friends to get together and use me as an excuse to yeah. buy <laughs> foundation. But that that's great, huh? That's great. And let me let me make this mark um that it's going to last as long as YouTube is alive or until I don't know. I think of this sometimes. Eh? My podcast episodes are out there in public and Let's say 100 years from now, you know, Google still has YouTube. My account's still there. I'll be dead yeah. and stuff. 
my episodes will still be there. Or I don't know if they will be. Maybe the internet's gonna change or something. But let yeah. it be known that you have affected my life, eh, guys. <laughs> um, you have made a mark in my life. Um, if there's any premature whatever things that happen, I want to take this time to express wood. it to you. Yeah, yeah. Not on that Knock on wood. Knock on wood. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's good. Is there, was there anything else you wanted to add about death? I think with my job, I see it as numbers. Like, it's, it's always statistics. I see death rates, cases, especially in COVID. And that's how so many people also see it, especially, you know, like politicians or people in the department. And I think unless you kind of talk to people who are affected by death or even just like your experience with the podcast, you'll never think about death because it's an it's an issue you would rather not. Like, it would just cause so much anxiety. Like, you were telling me that sometimes you can't sleep because you think about death. My friend really just told me a couple of days ago Now she thinks about her parents and they're dying. And that's a reality we're going to face in the next couple of years. Um, and it, it sucks. It really sucks. Uh, I, I don't know. I think... The last thing here is sometimes it takes time to accept people grieve different ways, but it's a wake up call that as much as we're growing older or the people around us are growing up, um, our parents and older people are growing older as well. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the thing with that, though, I want to end the, the death thought. And we're going to have our game, then we're good. Okay. The end the death thoughts is. I think your job, you deal with statistics and stuff, but what you do is you, fo- you find ways on how to promote better lifestyles, how to be mm. healthier. I think that's what you should do. Let's focus on that. Like, You're never going to yeah. answer the question of what happens after I die, right. but you are going to get to find so many answers to so many questions on how can I live better. I think mm-hmm. that's probably the best way I can think of on how to deal yeah. with death is to focus on living. Oof, quality wisdom. of life galing, galing <laughs> galing galing brain. I didn't see that coming it's like how but you don't chase success you chase you, you focus on learning and just improving your skills the sex yes. the sucks the sex the success is gonna come um, mm-hmm. the the success the success is gonna come and with the death thing just just focus on living your life and with the like with the parents thing I have I did think about it like my parents well, they have white hair but not that mm. much, but there are some angles where you can see more white hair. So I'm like, this is more white hair than like five years ago. So I do have those thoughts, but I'm really like, yeah. I'll just think about it when it comes time. Like it's gonna come. I'll think about it then. I don't. I have nothing to add to mm. it now. Yeah. Okay. So now it's time to play our game. Um, as we finish this, if boy abunda tito boy has his fast talk, I have my fast talk. So same mm-hmm. same mechanics. I'm gonna ask you a question. <laughs> You answer honestly the first thing that comes to your head, but we can okay. do explanations. I do like to hear okay. some stories behind this. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. For fast talk. Okay, so first one related to your job. Qualitative or quantitative? Qualitative. Ooh. Wait, what why? Why why do you like qualitative more? Does it make more sense? Um, I just hear people more versus quantitative. Uh, I hear their stories more. So yeah, qualitative. Do you like dealing with people? Is that is that one of it? I know. I mean, you, you you like being with people, but in terms of professionally mm. in your job, is that one of the things you like, Talaga? I actually like talking to people. I'm an extrovert, and uh-huh. I when I go and interview and talk to people, it gets it keeps me grounded to the work that I'm do I'm doing. Because Shepard, if you're just reading 20 journals and just then numbers. you're going to write something up, yeah, it it it, it really gets do so you, taxing. In your reports you write like Sinana Linda, do you ano, Yeah, do you we have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have that. We have that. That's why I like Quali more. Um yeah. That, that that's one thing that I noticed with both Gio and Dr. Gary. Their favorite things about med, it's a no, it's dealing with people. Like it's yeah. getting intimate, it's getting to really know their stories. And these are people who take who study books 
and graphs and like cadavers and like yeah. people who are dead, but they actually like people who are alive. Like they really like <laughs> dealing with people. Okay. Uh, next up, a pandemic that makes the sick people blind or deaf. Um, blind. Ooh, really? So, really? Yeah. Because? I think with technology and innovation, there's a lot that we could help for people who will lose their sight or who are blind. And, you know, we have been looking for ways to improve the quality of life for people. I think for me, the hardest is not being able to speak or be there for people physically. So I'd rather have someone who is disabled, but I could help that person with a quality of life. I mean, you know, there will be trans. There will be, we don't know what the world is going to be. Malay mo, they're going to be blind. And then in the next couple of years, their eyesight's back. So. Oh, okay. Okay, I like that. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Okay, here, not professional, not, not career related. Um, beer or cocktail? Cocktail. Okay. Beach or mountains? Uh, right now, uh, beach. Okay. Is there but a, usually, is there a mood for mountains? <laughs> usually mountains. So when when I when before the pandemic, I would choose a mountain just because I like you know the cold, really? the weather, etc. Oh, I feel like the the mountain thing is the answer of someone in a relationship. Parang kasiyaba <laughs> cold weather, ganon. Which leads to my next question: LDR na walang away or kapit bahay na pagagin nagaaway? The relationship, sorry, the kapit bahay relationship. Oh no, ayoko ng toxic. Pero I can't do LDR also. <laughs> Wait lang. But gagin nagaaway doesn't necessarily mean toxic. I go. However, you d- you interpret the question, LDR na walang away or relationship with a kapit bahay na pagagin okay. nagaaway. Kapit bahay na palagi nagaaway, but it's a debate, okay. not a toxic, not a toxic argument. Okay. Because right, I right. can't I can't do LDR. Mm, okay. Okay. So not anymore. LDR. <laughs> <laughs> One. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question. Um, one main job or many side jobs? Mm, many side jobs. I think it keeps people interesting and you get to do what you like. Marry your childhood sweetheart, sweetheart at the age of 27 or marry a successful divorced CEO by the age of 37. Grabe. It depends when I'm ready. Wait, <laughs> Naka pressure. I'm 26, so uh-huh. I'm not ready soon. I I would say shocks. This is difficult. I hate this. <laughs> Hindi siya <shock house talk. laughs> Sorry. Um. Actually, no. I'm not sorry. I'm enjoying this. Yeah. This is. I want to know how. I don't know how I'd answer this if I were uh, in your position. Because mm-hmm. at 37, I'm okay. have a kid. Yeah, but I'm also not ready now. I don't really want to have a kid. So maybe when I'm 37, um, Do you not want marry to have a kid? someone. I'm not sure if I want to. I'm I'm sure Ooh. I don't want. Now. Wait, wait. I'm sure I don't want when I'm 27. But it doesn't mean when I'm married, I could get a kid, right? Oh, nice, nice. Ah, so you can get married <laughs> at 27 and not have a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Marry my... Okay, final answer. Marry my... Totoo bang childhood? Pwede bang college? <laughs> well, okay, sorry. But, but what I mean, what I mean by that is like yung unang, parang, guess mo? Okay, okay. Yung unang okay, so, so definitely marry my unang, my childhood sweetheart 27. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. <laughs> but but I'm not, hold, walang, ano, wala, ano. walang muna kid. I'm not ready. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> mahal mo or mahal ka? Oh, gosh. Um... Um, I feel like Maha... there, there, there are characters in, co- popping up in your head. Grab it, like, grab it. Do I like this situation? Do I like myself when I was in this relationship? Okay, I think. Oh no, I can't do this. <laughs> there are in between. 
yung mahal kong enough pero yeah. mahal no, but if you have okay, to fine, fine. One side. if i have to choose i'd rather choose the one i really love versus the one who loves me Ooh. Okay. yeah i, I don't that. think i don't think i could live a life not I'm forcing myself but probably you know Settling. just just waiting till you I could be with yeah I could be with this person okay all right all right <laughs> our last one on this this probably not the word message to your 30 year old self oh that's soon <laughs> oh, I years? wish yeah that's kind of soon mm-hmm. so I think I, I wish you're still in a job that you like or you love and that you're ready to start a family or you're ready to be married. So either one. And Take note. <laughs> whoever's listening. <laughs> Sana pinakikinggan mo tong podcast, di ba? <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, I hope that I still love what I'm doing. That's number one for me. And that I could be able to give, I don't know, like splurge and spoil my parents because that's really the number one goal in my next couple of years. Um, you know, just treating them to whatever. They're always like, you don't have to think about us. But Chamber, when you have the money and yeah. you have the time, hopefully by that time, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit free, but still love my yes. job. Um, yeah, so that's it. And I hope you're happy and satisfied with life. That's it. Let's throw Everything one else, random happy. thing. One super but, random thing. Like any like random skill, random person you've met, or any... Let's just throw one something super random that, that you want your 30-year-old self to have done. Is there anything? Meet Michelle Obama. Oh, yes. I wish you do. I really wish you... Yeah. I, I would feel bad, honestly, if I met her and you didn't. I'd be like, nah, just... I mean, you're great. The number I mean, one. <laughs> the, I know someone in the Philippines who loves and adores you so much. But someone yeah. wants to meet you more. Yeah. 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 That, that number one. Top of my list. Not looking back. Meet Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama. All right. <laughs> okay. So, sakto. My camera also just died. Um, That's it. Thank you very much, Ekai. I do enjoy this as, as per usual in all our, our conversations. I... I'm moving forward. I hope I get you here again. I, I really I enjoy talking with you and learning from when I tell you. Like there are there's there's there's, there's a thing with your brain eh, that I can share my thoughts with lots of people, but when it when I share it with your brain, I also I get some <laughs> insights that even if it's just me talking, I wouldn't yeah. get it if I'm talking to a wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm glad. That. I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> Sana you know. <laughs> Send me insights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks, thanks, and thanks. good luck with all your health stuff. Let me stop the, <laughs> let me stop the recording. Thank you for having me.